What do you think? It looks a little like him. What would you say is your favorite Stallone movie after today? Ah, would it be Cobra? Meet Cobra. He does the job nobody wants. Are you asking me what your favorite Stallone film is? I have no confidence in my opinions. Yes, you're... <laughs> it's, that, it's that are over the top, right? The other canon's gem. Right, right. They're both so excellent. <laughs> Much like over the top, it's not the kind of film we watch here typically. We do B-movies, exploitation films. This is an A-level film, A-level cast, A-level budget, <laughs> C-level quality in certain ways. It's not made poorly like a lot of our movies, which adds to a lot of fun. This is made very well. It's well shot. It's, it's written by screenwriters. And it has You say that as if Stallone it. didn't win an Academy Award for screenwriting. <laughs> not, for, not for Cobra. Maybe not. <laughs> If you could write a movie about yourself, about how great you are in every way, how tough you are, how smart you are, the hot supermodels you could sleep with, yeah. if you were a cop who obeyed none of the rules, you would be Cobretti, the Cobra. Oh, Stallone so wrote a movie about how tough he is, but he named himself Marion. Yep. That was, I was gonna ask you why, why, why would you do that? I don't know. Marion Cobretti. Is that really a name? I don't know why this movie exists, except <laughs> to say how awesome Sylvester Stallone is. He drives a car from the 30s, 40s? It's a, it's a hot rod. Uh, 1950s, 1950 something, I think. Is it 50s? Of all the cars, That's the car. why would you pick that? And he chews a matchstick, he runs around with grenades <laughs> and machine guns. He chews a matchstick for the entire 90 minute movie. He murders people for no reason. If something bad happens, they call him the Cobra. All the Cobra. He wears sunglasses. The entire movie. I wear my sunglasses at night. And he takes out serial killers. You know, it sounds like you're just describing like bits and pieces of a movie, but this is the entire that's plot. That's the whole story. That that's the entire story. There's he's protecting a hot model, which he eventually <laughs> sleeps with. He marries her in real life. <laughs> Bridget Nielsen sees serial killers killing, and then they come after her, and the Cobretti has to help. Or something. Yes. That's it. And he helps by murdering the entire cult. At one point, he's trying to protect her and is literally chasing the bad guys with her in the passenger seat of his car. <laughs> They're shooting up his car. <laughs> Bulls going through the windows. They're scene. hitting bridges that are just... <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, oh. I actually love that chase scene. I loved all the action scenes. I thought it was really well done. Oh! Gonna need an alignment. Oh. 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 I love oh. this montage. This is so oh, ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> So we mentioned at one point, the only problem with this movie is really Sylvester Stallone. Every time he's in it, it's just 80s cheese. The rest of the time, it's a fun action movie. And so, I know, I huge respect for Stallone. He's been in some amazing movies.
but in this movie, which he starred in... Stop where my mom will shoot. You're ruining my flow. Oscar. You know what? Break. Daylight. Whatever the, <laughs> like, whatever the f*** that piece of shit was. He's like, I'm trapped in the tunnel. Are you saying you found a way out of here? It's always a chance. He seemed like he went too far. Like he was given like free reign. You know how younger guys, they have to like make compromises. Like when he was writing Rocky, he wanted to make a very realistic story about the you know, struggle of, of, of this character. Just like in Judge Dredd. You're killing me. I am the law. But in this one, he was the guy trying too hard. He's a sitting duck out there. It's so ridiculous, it's so crazy what this character's life is like and how badass he is all the time. I got a bomb here! I'll kill her! I'll blow this whole place up! Go ahead. I don't shock her. Do you think Canon Films went to him and said, what do you got? And he had two scripts about how awesome he was. And one was over the top, <laughs> and the other was Cobra. And they said, here's a budget, do your thing. Which one came out first? Uh, um, Cobra was 86, and Over the Top was... Basking on 87. the glory of Cobra they came out with Over the Top. Yeah, so, uh, wow. He's like, we want Cobra, but your guy's not a psychopath. Scratch that, but he has a kid. We don't want you to use guns in this, but we want you to abandon your kid and break arms. The American dream. So we're introduced to this awesome 50 car he's driving mm -hmm. at the beginning. It's like his baby, right? They specifically show it a lot. Yes. And when he goes home, some dude is parked in his space. Y yeah, not some dude, like a gang of dudes. <laughs> like six guys in a 65 Impala. They're not acting in a way people who aren't looking for trouble are acting. And he literally hits them with his car and pushes them out of the way. What's your problem, my sissy? You touched my car, man. Later we see him buffing it. <laughs> With his trench coat or something. <laughs> this, this Glock. And then... I think we saw an ad lib gone wrong. He confronts this punk, gets in his face, and he, he tears the front of his shirt down, and you can clearly see a wire running up his chest and big tape mark and, and, the, and a microphone. She got to mom it! What are, so, sure shouldn't those guys be murdering him right now? <laughs> no. Do you think that was his microphone for the scene? Yes. No, I think he was a wire. It was a microphone for the scene. I think this movie's so shitty. Oh. The question is, did Stallone improv on this poor extra who had two lines of dialogue and just rip his shirt, and the guy just stayed like a pro and played with it? <sighs> yes, yes. That's really what it looked like, because the guy shows up later, and they're friends. They're cool. He's like, I'm not, I'll move, I'll move my car. I'm, no problem. And he's not dead, which if that was a wire, you think he would be dead later. Mostly dead, yeah. Co the Cobra would have come home and that guy would have been face down <laughs> in the stoop of his house. There's another scene I want to mention. Um, definitely the, the, the police sketch. <laughs> Out of nowhere, this movie, it's like a very serious tone where this, this woman has just gotten assaulted and like beaten. She's in the hospital and like people have tried to kill her. Bridget Nielsen. And, and she's like, describe your attacker. And she draws this cartoon of this mutant looking guy. I think he draws it. Oh, whoever. It's like in crayon. So what do you think? It looks a little like him. <laughs> <laughs> That's your guy. <laughs> yeah, that guy. He is legitimately scary in this movie. He's my favorite character. If you take Stallone out and just have it about this guy being a serial killer, it's an effective film. And they they light him to really accentuate his like, his, I don't want to say scary ass face. It's not um, Mr. Z Zadar. <laughs> oh. oh. You can hit my website if you like. It's www.zdar.com. He also has an insane voice. 
that, yeah. You thought it was maybe like modulated. It sounds a almost inhuman, bit. but. I've heard the guy in other movies and he has a great voice. But it's intense. This was the devil in legend. Intense. <laughs> we are the future! My favorite stunt was the guy who got crushed by the van in the parking garage. Oh my god, that guy got annihilated. Oh! I was worried that someone had died. They filmed an accident on set. Cobretti, you really find out he is a complete psychopath. Are you talking about Marion? At the end, you find out Marion is a complete psychopath. He guts a guy. He burns two guys alive. You have the right to remain silent. Is he gonna use the match? Yes! He yes. sets one guy up on a hook. And then watches him burn to death. Let the mother burn. <laughs> just doesn't try to stop it, doesn't try, nothing. He just watches. Uh, yeah. And then he gets on a motorcycle. Of with someone his, he killed. With his future ex-wife. <laughs> and drives out of the movie. Yeah. Yeah, he, um, he killed a lot of people in that movie. This movie is like cliche action movie, 1985 or whenever. Bridget Nielsen is modeling toasters that's intercut between Stallone walking through West Hollywood. What was that? We enjoyed the scene. Now what is she selling? I... Robots? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Do you think if we had women modeling toasters in our show, we'd get more views? Would you consider Cobra to be so bad it's good? It, this is so bad it's good just because it was a super competent, super well-made movie that just went ridiculous with with its hero character. It's like you're in your own fantasy dream and you're Marion Cobretti and you are beyond <laughs> reproach. <laughs> yeah, so bad it's good, absolutely. This is what happens when Canon Films has too much money and Sylvester Stallone is on too much coke and they're just like, we need a movie now about how awesome you are. And they put this together and this is not Future War on a, a shoestring budget with cardboard boxes. <laughs> this is worth throwing millions. We've just got, what, what do you want to do? Let's do it. And you get Cobra. And it is glorious in every way possible. So, so bad it's good? 100% so bad it's good. Just for different reasons. <laughs> Amen. That's your guy. <laughs> I want to add to the end, the clanking of the cult. I want us to oh, mention the shit. cult and let's clank our, our, our well, we're gonna clank this and have Aaron do clank, clank. Clank, clank. Sorry, guys. Jesus the Christ. <laughs> There's whiskey everywhere. Aaron, just throw it. Okay. You mean water? I'm drinking my water. It's empty. Well, our co producer can help. God damn. She's so Ryan that right into my chest. You're, you're bleeding, man. You're hit, man. You're bleeding. I'm having heart palpitations. <laughs>